Take a look at this photo. In 1972, it revealed to the world the brutality of the Vietnam War. In 2016, Facebook says it reveals too much. I'm Brent Goff, and this is The Day. The image of the napalm girl and Facebook at the center of controversy over censorship. Norway's top newspaper editor has a message for Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg. Kjære Mark, jeg har skrevet et brev til dig. Du er blitt verdens mektigste redaktør. Ingen annen har større innflytelse på hvilken information som skal nå frem til hvem. Jeg mener du misbruker den makten. Tonight, the editor from Norway is my guest. Can his Dear Mark letter make a difference on or offline? Also on the show, still searching for closure 15 years after the 9-11 attacks. Today, America paused to begin remembering again from New York to the steps of the Capitol in Washington. That makes it our generation's burden. We lived through that terrible day. And we will never forget that terrible day. As we salute all of those who died on 9-11, we must also salute those who have lost their lives in the years since. Well, welcome to the program, everyone. We begin the day with a Dear Mark letter. The editor-in-chief of Norway's largest daily newspaper today published his letter to the CEO of Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg. Clear and to the point, Mr. Espen Egel Hansen tells the boss at Facebook how he is abusing his power, chilling free speech and ignoring the duties of his job as CEO of the world's largest social media platform. Uh, Mr. Hansen explains what happened recently when the Norwegian author Tom Egeland posted an entry on Facebook about photos which changed the history of warfare. Now, one of those images was the iconic napalm girl taken during the Vietnam War back in 1972. And because the girl is nude, Facebook removed the photo, citing community standards. Well, when Tom Egelon protested, Facebook locked his profile, freezing him out of any chat on the website. In an open letter today, Mr. Hansen called the action and abuse of power and accused the team at Facebook of not thinking through its decisions. Well, I'm joined tonight by that editor, the editor-in-chief of the Often Polston newspaper in Norway, Mr. Espen Egel Hansen. Mr. Hansen, thank you very much. It's good to have you on the day tonight. You wrote your letter. You published it. Facebook has just announced that it will allow the photo to be reposted. Is that what you wanted? <laughs> well, uh, I think it's a wise uh, decision by uh, Facebook. I think it was a necessary uh, decision. But what I wanted to do was to raise a much larger uh, discussion about the power that Facebook uh, has today because we all use Facebook. So many people go there to find news and uh, information. So in effect, uh, their filters become the global filter for what is uh, acceptable and what is non not accept acceptable information. So my case was to raise a discussion about that. And you know, Mr. Hansen, we, we contacted Facebook earlier today as well. We invited uh, Mark Zuckerberg uh, to be on the show to, to at least to talk about what has happened. Um, instead, here is what the company sent to us. It's a statement from Facebook, and they say, while we recognize that this photo is iconic, it's difficult to create a distinction between allowing a, f a photograph of a nude child in one instance and not others. We try to find the right balance between enabling people to express themselves while maintaining a safe and respectful experience of our global community. Our solution won't always be perfect, but we will continue to try to improve our policies and the ways in which we apply them. What do you make of that response? 
Well, it's it's uh, the response they have given to not only you but to everyone today. It's uh, a kind of a standard uh, response they do give when they are criticized. And uh, and there's nothing wrong with what they say. Actually, there's nothing wrong with what they do. They do a very good job, for example, in preventing uh, child pornography from appearing uh, at Facebook. They do a really good uh, job that. But this photograph but, is obviously not child pornography. I mean, it's one of the most recognized photographs in the world. Exactly. And it's kind of a, fal a falsification of our uh, shared history when mm. you take uh, that photo uh, away. And I think that's what Facebook uh, understood tonight and that's why they changed on just uh, this picture. Yeah, just this picture. You, you know, you have not been alone today in your protest, Mr. Hansen. Your government has also uh, publicly condemned what it calls Facebook's policy of censorship and Facebook's attempts to edit out history. I want you to take a listen to what the Prime Minister of Norway had to say today. Almost 90% of people under 30 use social media as their primary source of information. If someone edits out historically important photographs, edits our own history, then we lose something important, both for their upbringing and for the community as a whole. Have your contacts there in in Norway, in Oslo, government sources, have, have they been able to tell you whether or not the prime minister, her getting involved, did that maybe have um, influence and force Facebook to reverse? No, uh, we don't have any contacts uh, within Facebook that reveals that kind of uh, information. So this is pure speculation. But of course, it helped the case. I. I published this front page and the letter to, to Zuckerberg this morning and just a few hours later, uh, Prime Minister Anna Solberg made uh, her fir first page, uh, post, sorry, on Facebook and publishing this picture. She was cens censured, she republished uh, and so on. And of course, that built the whole story and mm -hmm. I think also it built the pressure on Facebook. And you know, Mr. Hans, your letter has generated a lot of vocal support today, including our next guest, the American journalism professor and the outspoken media critic, Jeff Jarvis. Um, Jeff has written extensively on social media on, and the media in general. He, his books include Public Parts and What Would Google Do? Jeff, it's good to have you on the show. Let me ask you, did Facebook... It's an honor Facebook, to be here with uh, such an editor as Mr. Hansen. Thank you. Did, <laughs> let me ask you, did Facebook do what you thought it would do today? Yes, for good and bad, both. Uh, you know, let's let's start here. I think that uh, Facebook has a right to edit what they publish, just as Mr. Hansen does in Often Post Then. Nonetheless, this was a very stupid action on Facebook's part. And I called it uh, an example of what I would say is algorithmic thinking. Uh, in a technology world, they wanted to make a rule. And the rule is nudity and child verboten forever. Clearly, that's not what this photo is. And the rule was too simplistic. And the execution of it was too much of an algorithm and, and, and not thought through. I've argued for quite some time that Facebook needs, at its executive ranks, an editor of the rank of Mr. Hansen himself who can bring a perspective of principle to this discussion. Um, this discussion well, now comes from a technological side. It comes from a PR side. It also needs to come from the side of principles. Let me ask Mr. Hansen that too, because Mr. Hansen, you said today in, in your letter that um, Mark Zuckerberg is now the most powerful editor in the world. I mean, do you really believe that, that he's, a, he's an editor? Or most people would not think of him being a journalist or an editor. They think of him being some type of techie or an entrepreneur. No, he's, he's, he's not a journalist, he's in, not in the technical sense an uh, editor, but I call him the most powerful editor-in-chief uh, in the world because he is the one person that ha has the most power just now to decide on what kind of information can reach to whom. And, and when Facebook uh, uh, censured this, just this, uh, picture, stu stupid as you say, uh, Jeff. He acts, the, this algorithmical, algorithmical rules, they act as an uh, editor. And the important thing that is that Mike Zuckerberg comes out and defend or discuss 
that uh, decision. And what we see again and again is that we get uh, a, a very uh, almost machine-made answer yeah. from, uh, from uh, Facebook, and they never attend a discussion like we have today. And, and this is uh, what uh, I agree with uh, Jeff, they would have to do that. Jeff, I wanted to um, talk about the Dear Mark letter that you posted um, today. We've got an excerpt of that that we want to show people. You, you said that um, Facebook needs an editor um, to stop Facebook from editing. Um, and earlier this year, you wrote that Facebook and Google are not media, even though they are taking over some of the functions that media used to think were their God-given rights, such as production, distribution. Facebook and Google do not create and own content. They don't mediate. They enable, which is interesting. Someone needs to set, explain, justify, and adjust standards for what the platform does, not in the interest of the brand, but in the interest of the public. And they, you say that's what editors do or are supposed to do. That's why Facebook and the others need journalists. So the question tonight, do you think Facebook is going to make that jump and basically humanize and put well, editors in instead of algorithms? Well, no, um, uh, if I can not, that's as they, they did recently. Well, well, go ahead, Mr. Hanson. Uh, Which I, one I of think... us do you want to respond? Go ahead, Mr. Hanson. Okay, where, where, where do we go? Okay. Uh, the, al the algorithm is the editor uh, today, but the one that controls that algorithm is the editor-in-chief. So an algorithm is not a neutral thing. It's you want it to do a job. And so, of course, what you do when you put an algorithm in to make, uh, make decisions is, is kind of an editing. And, of course, they have to be able to discuss and defend their decision that they do through this algorithm. I, I want to ask you, gentlemen, maybe, Jeff, let me ask you, what about American values influencing what gets um, banned and what, you know, what gets turned off and those puritanical prudish values? And I ask you that because nudity in the United States is something that you don't see. Violence is something you see. And, you know, a German photographer used nudity on Facebook not too long ago to show that it was, if you had hate speech on Facebook at the same time as nudity, the algorithm would block the nudity much more quickly than it would the hate speech. Is that because of the algorithm being informed by it's also American because of values? The to, to some extent, yes, you're, you're right, and we are prudish in America, and I wish we weren't. I think Europe has a better and more mature attitude about this. And my fear in the long run is if you go with the lowest common denominator of tolerance around the world, we'll have no speech. So part of what this crusade of Mr. Hansen has done is to, is to raise the issue of saying how we have to have more speech, and more speech is generally a good thing. And it's not just about this photo. It's also about the the cartoons portraying Muhammad as he brought up. Uh, it's about uh, all kinds of cases where there needs to be an opportunity to make mature judgments around this. Now, are there different standards all around the world? Yes, indeed, there are. Uh, there are things that we say in America that you wouldn't say in Europe. Uh, and, and Facebook and Google really can't be in the position, I think, of editing for every locality. Right. I, I'm opposed to the right to be forgotten in Europe. But I think that we can get to a point where we can have someone who's respected like Mr. Hansen being able to talk to somebody who's sensible and human inside Facebook, and they can negotiate these cases in mature and smart and intelligent ways. And in the end, the intelligent human being should be the one who wins. And there was, of course, a lot of discussion over Facebook's um, removal of the photo today on social media. We wanted to show you and our viewers um, what happened today. Um, we're going to show you a map, as you can see right here, this map of Twitter trends shows the issue resonated with Europeans in particular. Debate also spread to the United States, part of Africa and Brazil and India as well. And as we were saying earlier, the Prime Minister of Norway, she voiced her support by un uploading the photo in question to her own Facebook account. But Facebook then deleted that as well. So she posted a blacked out version calling on the social media giant to review its editing policy. 
Now, others have done that too. Facebook still needs an editor in chief. It does no good to stick its fingers in its ears and pretend it's not a media company. And here, what if Facebook had the kind of power it has now during the Vietnam War? What if we'd have no one would have been able to see the photo of the napalm girl? And that, if if I may yeah, though, let me go ahead. Let me argue that the Facebook Facebook. This is a big discussion in the U.S. right now. There are those in media who argue that Facebook is a media company because it looks like what we do. It has text and images, and it takes ads. I argue pretty strenuously that Facebook is not a media company. We tend to look at the world godlike in our own image, as if everybody wants to be us in media. Facebook is something new. It is not a mass medium. It, it is a personal services company that enables anyone to talk to anyone. And that's that's new and important. And what we have to do in news is also learn new ways. We have to learn how to bring news and fact-checking and credibility and value to the discussions and the conversations people have on Facebook. So yeah. we need an ongoing dialogue between the publishers and the platforms to understand how to serve the public in new ways and not try to turn Facebook into a medium, not trying to regulate it like a medium, but instead teach it its principles as it teaches us new ways to build relationships with people. And, and you know, what we're talking about here at the end of the day, what both of you gentlemen are saying is that there, you, there needs to be more, more of a human touch, a human element in Facebook. Um, ironically, you know, Facebook is shared by over a billion people on the planet. Mr. Hanser, I'll let you have the last word here. We're running out of time. Um, some people say Facebook is too big to be human. Do you agree? I don't know. If it's too big, it's because uh, too many of us uh, like it. They, they do a, a fantastic uh, job and we trust them. We trust Facebook. Uh, with uh, using them uh, every day. But that also gives Facebook a very, very large responsibility. And just now, I don't think they handle that responsibility very well. Yeah, I mean, and I have a feeling that we have not heard the end of, of this. Uh, Mr. Hansen, we certainly appreciate you taking the time to be on today. We hope you come back again um, if and when this story arises again. And Jeff Jarvis, journalism professor and media commentator extraordinaire from the U.S. Jeff. Thank you for being on the day as well. We appreciate it. Thank you.